Hi everyone, again I'm Tim. This is my presentation for the IET Present in 10 competition. Today I'm going to be talking about building bridges in the context of digital futures. So I'm going to talk about changing the world. I'm going to ask if we have the right tools and I'm going to show you how we can build a bridge. So just to start off, I wanted to share this quote I came across a few months ago that I thought was really interesting, uh, which I thought was really interesting. Um, software doesn't just change the state of a program. You can think of software as changing the state of the world. And I thought, yeah, this was a really interesting quote to come across. I'm building a lot of software at the moment. It's something I'm involved in. And we're all affected by software at the moment. You know, all these tools, connected devices um, that are starting to speak to us more and more, that are having a genuine effect on the world. And not all of these effects have been great so far. This is just a selection of news stories from the past year or so, uh, showing how this software and digital future can go wrong. And I think that's in quite a stark comparison to bridges which, you know, we walk and drive across bridges all the time and you expect it to work. If it fell over while you were on it, one in every 10 times, or it just uh, was falling on top of people, getting in the way of rivers, that would be a disaster. But that's kind of what we live with in terms of our software and tooling. But in the future, we're going to need to figure out how to make the digital equivalent of these bridges that are going to last for a long time and work for everyone. So. Um, before we get into that further, I'm just going to do a quick demo um, showing kind of a small <laughs> bridge, I guess, and showing what this actually looks like in the real world. So um, I'm going to share. Give me a second. Um, I've shared a link in the chat and I'd like Igor, if you could go to this for me, that would be amazing. So while Igor's doing that, I'm just going to take my camera off. So I've got um, a connected device here. Hopefully you can all see. Uh, get everything in it with some LEDs. So Igor, are you on that page? Maybe you can talk to me. <laughs> so yeah, just for everyone watching, this was a quick demo that I put together last week to show you how connected our world is. Um, these are just some small LEDs on my desk and hopefully what we're going to see is Igor uh, pressing one of these buttons shortly. There we go. That's the green light is on. So maybe you can put the red one on next. There we go. And sorry, that's like really bright for my camera. But if you do the blue one, Igor, as well. Yeah. So there we go. That's a bit better. So we can see all of the lights coming. So that's great. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll just connect back up. Cool. So just to give a little um, demonstration of what was happening there, basically Igor sending a message across the internet to my desk and turning some lights on. And I know this is, you know, maybe a little bit of a toy demo, a little bit of fun, really. But this is something that we're going to have all of the time in the future. You know, already we can control lasers in manufacturing facilities and scientific research centers. We can send messages to farmers and workers on the other side of the planet to tell them what crop they need to grow that season. Um, and we can monitor bridges and all sorts, which I'm going to get onto shortly. So do we have the right tools to take on this challenge? Well, by way of comparison, again, I'm just going to bring us back to something we know that we can build, which is a bridge. This is the Severn Bridge that connects England and Wales. It was built in 1960, or open, sorry, in 1966. It's carried over 300 million vehicles. Uh, there have been at least 10 major modifications, as far as I could tell, that included strengthening work and work that was done to prevent the corrosion of the cables, applying a new coating to them. And eventually a second bridge was actually needed. So there, there were some big changes that were involved, and that was due to the increase in traffic and the weight of vehicles that wasn't predicted at the time. And by way of comparison, this is Linux, which is arguably one of the world's most successful software projects. 
It's an operating system that powers Android phones at 100% of the world's top 500 supercomputers. Uh, it was released in 1991 and has had almost 6,000 changes from over 1,000 authors. Last month, so that was the statistics I found when I went online just this week. In the last month, that's how many changes there have been, which is clearly a, a different proposition to the bridge if we look back. There have been over a million changes in total and almost 700 full releases um, in that time. And a relatively unmodified version of Linux just landed on Mars on this drone helicopter called Ingenuity. It's been flying around, you can see a shadow in the bottom of the picture there, and taking measurements and sending them back. And this is pretty much the same thing that runs on computers and phones all around the world. So the conclusion that I've come to is that sharing is a superpower. You know, the reason that Linux has been so successful is because anybody can make a change to it. You don't have to have money, be a member, you don't have to have a certain degree. You can come and have a look and make a change. And if it's meaningful and positive, it will be accepted and it will kind of drive the project forward. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this in the future and probably we need it. I've got projects like Risk v which is going to allow us to create computer chip architectures in the same way. Uh, KeyCAD is a PCB design tool that's leading the way on the PCB uh, tool front and beating proprietary products. And even OpenML, which is pulling together data sets from all around the world. So I think Roy had just talked uh, before about how much data there is out there. And this is a way for people to contribute valuable data from all different walks of life and anywhere around the world. So I'm going to probably quite quickly uh, show you how to build a bridge with these tools. Um, I'm going to be optimistic about the future state of software and digital tools. I'm going to aim to reduce environmental impact where possible. And I'm going to say, again, share everything because it's a superpower. So why not? So when we're planning our bridge, we're going to be pulling data in probably from satellites that have been scanning the world, building up the best ever model of the world so we can decide exactly whereabouts we want to place our bridge. We'll be designing it in CAD and sharing those tools so anybody from around the world can comment on them. Again, design optimization and building it out of materials that can be sourced locally. And we can also plan when we're actually building it, how we're going to get everything there without clogging up the road system. Uh, when it comes to building the bridge, we're going to break it up into prefabricated components that will be built by autonomous machines into you know, optimal sizes and so on. We've got massive robots that can put the bridge together and take all of the danger out of this bridge building so we can complicate, so we can focus on designing and building the best bridge possible rather than just worrying about people getting injured. Um, and we could even have bridges building themselves. This is a project from a few years ago in the Netherlands where a bridge was 3D printed. That's actually steel uh, being printed by the robot as it moves along the bridge, which it is building. Pretty amazing. We're going to need to take care of our bridge. So we've got all sorts of devices to measure different parameters of the bridge over time. You can send drones up to do manual inspections, um, even using x-rays. I read about that in the ENT magazine a little while ago, uh, monitoring traffic and so on. We're going to be collecting this data using low energy protocols to send it to nearby units, clean it all up before sending it up uh, to be processed elsewhere. And we can share all of this information globally so everyone can see how well our bridge is getting on. Uh, we can compare it to our models and other bridges, planning maintenance and optimizing supply chains when we might need new parts. And finally, just before we get rid of our bridge, we don't just want to blow it up and dump it in the river anymore. Uh, we're going to take it apart in a sensible way, reuse these parts where possible, hopefully in other local projects, reuse sensors and so on. So in summary, we're already changing the world with these digital tools that we have. Sharing leads to amazing tools, probably the best tools that we didn't even think we would have before. You know, somebody else's perspective can be amazing in that way. And we need to build digital bridges. So I've shown you how we can build an actual bridge, but we need to have something that's just as reliable, that works every time to build our digital future. 
and that includes all of the 5G and 6G aspects which were talked about earlier today. And in the spirit of sharing everything, you can find the demo that I used for these LEDs uh, that Igor so graciously used. Um, you can find that completely open on GitHub uh, if you follow this link. So thank you very much. And if there's any questions, I'll take them. Uh, well, we'll take them at the end. Thank you.